Hi everyone, my name is Daria and I'm happy to have Gautier from ZFi as a guest for this interview. Gautier and his team built this solution through native account abstraction powered by ZK Sync and intent-based transactions to enhance the on-chain user experience. Watch this video to learn about implementing account abstraction technology in consumer-oriented applications. So, Gautier. Please share some interesting facts about your professional background. Yeah, pleasure to be here. So I've been, you know, in this space since uh, 2017. I was studying uh, communication and marketing, but, you know, while doing my studies, I was really focused on actually crypto and the whole blockchain space. So while I was doing my studies, I also had an agency, a Web2, Web3 agencies, uh, where I used to help startups grow, uh, create uh, different types of uh, application databases, websites. Um, yeah, so, you know, been doing all these things and also was very active um, in the crypto crypto space. I had a YouTube channel back in the days. Uh, oh, nice. The French community, yeah. Uh, I was also very active in the Crypto Valley Association, which is a, a Swiss association. Uh, I discovered DeFi and and I wanted to make it accessible. So this is how this is how things came to be, basically. Can you give a brief introduction to ZFi and explain the core problem it solves in Web3 space? Yeah, definitely. So we built ZFi uh, around a year year ago, I'd say a bit more than a year. Uh, you know, when we, we discovered actually a native account abstraction on ZK Sync. And for us, we were like, wow, this is this is amazing because before building ZFi, we were building a, a DeFi super app. and we were seeing all the hurdles that users were having to get them on board, right? To create a wallet, to understand different networks, private keys, gas management. And, and we saw that gas was one of the main hurdles. And then we discovered ZK Sync with its native account abstraction. And we, we saw that we were actually able to completely abstract gas from the end user with basically what, what ZK Sync uh, enabled. And then when we saw this, we were like, it's amazing, but not, I would say not many dApps on ZK Sync were leveraging uh, native account abstraction, especially, especially paymasters, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were seeing like different types of implementations. Um, and also what we wanted to do is enable users to pay gas with any token because we were seeing dApps enabling people to pay with a couple of tokens. But our goal was really to uh, even abstract that and 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 just enable any token to be accepted as gas and also enable uh, uh, um, dApps to really leverage this in a very seamless manner. So we saw this and we wanted to basically enable any dApp on ZK Sync to simply just leverage a paymaster, mm -hmm. enable users to pay gas with any token and also sponsor transactions um with you know any type of custom logic can you explain what is account abstraction account abstraction there's a lot of different definitions um of, of you know explaining how uh basically what it is but in simple terms it's really uh you know simplifying the on-chain user experience um by leveraging uh smart accounts right so today we're all using eoas um and you know smart accounts is like programmable wallets, which enables a lot of different, um, I would say advantages, such as like uh, smart recovery. Like if you use your wallets, you can have programmable wallets. You can abstract gas, for example, from the end user uh, and basically make the on-chain user experience uh, way more seamless for users in general. Uh, so this is why, you know, account abstraction is, is, is solving and is going to solve. Why did you decide to choose ZK Sync? Uh, there are many uh, solutions in the market uh, building native account abstraction. So why ZK Sync? There's a lot of you know account abstraction tooling, but an EVM chain which had native account abstraction implemented uh, at, at at the core core level, uh, there was actually n n no chain besides like maybe Starknet, but was not EVM compatible. We all know that ZK rollups are, are the end game, uh, you know, remaining trustless. Uh, you know, if you compare, for example, to optimistic rollups, uh, enable high scalability. Uh, so, you know, it's all these things put together that, um, you know, for us, it, it was a no brainer at, at some point, you know, uh, it's like all these elements were like, wow, this is where we need to go. This is where we need to build. 
and and create a future where we can we can onboard people into Web3. Okay, thank you. And um, can you explain what are intent-based transactions and how they differ from traditional blockchain transactions? Yeah, so here again, there's many different definitions, but I'll give you the, the, the way I see it mostly is that yeah. an intent-based transaction is really focused on uh, the outcome, right? A desire that a user wants, right? Um, whereas a traditional uh, blockchain transaction uh, is really specific detail, step-by-step -step execution that a uh, user wants to do, right? Mm -hmm. So if I can take an example like uh, for like Uniswap X. Um, so let's say you want to trade token A to token B and you want the, the best execution. So what Uniswap X will do, it will route um, the orders and aggregates them off chain to uh, fillers, right? Um, and instead of looking at the only liquidity source on Uniswap, it will look at all uh, the different liquidity, so liquidity sources to basically execute uh, the best trade for you on your behalf, right? Um, and uh, it, it will do so efficiently and also while managing the gas. So at the end, the user says, I want to trade token A from token B at a certain price. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, he just says what he wants and then everything is executed and handled for him. So he does not have to like manage everything on his side, like the gas, the contract to interact with, uh, just, you know, focus on the desired outcome, basically. How compatible your solution with existing blockchain ecosystems or applications? You mentioned that you built this solution and you help like uh, projects in the ecosystem to, to use this gasless transaction. So can you share more about this? opportunities and partnerships. The way it works is that DAP integrates our API. It's very, it's very seamless. Uh, and then what happens is that when a user, for example, wants to do a gas, a gasless transaction, um, so he will say to our API, which acts as a solver, I want to pay my gas with this specific token, right? Mm -hmm. And then the API will do all the calculations to know how much of that input token we need to take in order for the paymaster to cover the gas. Yeah. So in this way, instead of having the wallets uh, build the whole transaction itself, uh, the, the user says what he wants, our API takes that uh, information, that, that transaction information and builds up that paymaster transaction for the user to sign. So it acts as a solver um, for the end user and enables gasless transaction. So basically dApps can just simply integrate our API and they have two choices. They can enable users to pay gas with any token um, or they can uh, enable users to have a completely sponsored transaction. And, and these sponsored transactions can be sponsored by themselves or even mm -hmm. third parties. And then we also have this, this intense, I would say NFT function where, for example, if a user holds a specific NFT, we can say, uh, we, we can detect that from the DAP level and say, all right, we see that the user has this NFT, we can enable a gas-free transaction. And this mm -hmm. we can do across all the DAPs that has integrated us, right? Um, so this is where we, we have this different uh, function and where you know, we, we created a way where it's, it's very seamless for DAPs to integrate us while enabling a lot of uh, flexibility for them to provide different gas uh, gas use cases, basically. What um, apps or maybe what platforms already use your solution? Yeah, so we have we have many different dexes on on zk sync. Uh, so if you try like Pancake Swap, uh, if you try um, most of the dexes have actually integrated our solution today. Um, so it's it's really cool. Like all the dApps, all all the users coming to zk sync, they they can try most of the dApps and and they're gasless. Uh, so this has been really. Exciting. We've been working with a lot of DeFi projects, a lot of gamings as well. Uh, we've done like gasless airdrops. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different use cases. We've, we've been able to create like uh, gas-free minting of NFTs. Yeah, we're discovering new use cases every day. So that's, that's the exciting part. And the way I, I'm really like seeing the future is that um, I believe that, you know, it, the, the way it's going to happen is that Third-party brands 
like for example, Ave could want mm -hmm. to sponsor gas on specific dApps um, mm -hmm. so that they could promote themselves. Like let's say uh, someone is using a Dex, they want to borrow a NEN, they could say, all right, the dApp could implement, oh, the gas is sponsored by Ave or uh, you know any anyone. So th that that's you know there's still a lot of things that we're discovering and and that we're seeing that's and that we want to see as well. So a lot, a lot more to come on that. Great. And uh, how does if I simplify the development process for developers? Or may maybe you have like some uh, use cases or examples how developers implemented your solution without you, for example, with your open code or something. Did you have any experience? Yeah. So, so in the first place, we were doing like almost everything manually, like onboarding projects, uh, telling them how to integrate. Uh, giving them like, uh, you know, one-time API keys. And now we've been able to really improve that. Uh, we've created a dashboard where people can just come, uh, create an API key uh, for the specific network they're, they're on. Uh, they can deposit directly on their vaults, withdrawal. So they, they handle their own, their own, their own scans, gas funds. And then we created a lot of um, documentation, videos so that people can uh, you know, view how to integrate it in a, in a couple minutes. We're really trying to to make it as as simple as as possible. Even if even today, you know, we've done a lot, but we want to keep we want to keep making it really, really, really simple for people to to integrate. We've created also like use cases uh, because there's like two different difficult parts is like integrating on the UI UI side, right? So really trying to to make it as as good as possible on, on that I see how developers work and how they build at the hackathons for example and your solution can be really helpful to them to onboard their potential users of their projects uh, to on chains I know that uh, the casing community is quite active but how do you um, engage with your community as a project and how can you attract people to to be around your brand, around your name. Zyfy is mostly B B two B focused, but uh, when we built Zyfy, we also wanted to show like the power of it and you know what it can bring. So we built like sort of like a gases portal where like people can do uh, can do swaps, um, pay gas with any token, and and certain things. So we wanted to showcase basically the products. And and we we did some quests, some incentives to really like spread the world the word throughout the whole zcasing ecosystem. Uh, so you know, focusing as well on B two C and and providing the service, so you know people can also hear about about Zyfy. Uh, and also, you know, it's it's been a lot like getting closer to the ecosystem, to the Matter Labs teams as well, um, and trying to get introductions to different projects, right? Uh, so, so there, there's been a, the, the focus on the B2C side, but also on, on the B2B side where we've been, you know, uh, reaching out to projects, proposing our solution. Um, so, so these, these, are, these are the things we've done. Um, we, we've also like uh, done a, a way to incentives where we were, we actually did an airdrop. So we, we airdropped some tokens to some of the projects that integrated us. And and today we have we have everything set up. We have a DAO, and we can give out like gas grants. Um, mm -hmm. We can give gas grants to projects. Uh, we can also give just grants from from the DAO and the association itself. So it's all these things that uh, we're putting in place to basically like uh, you know spread the word um, and 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 help projects implement Zyfy and incentivize them as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Account abstraction is the end game or not? <laughs> the thing is that account abstraction came out and, and at the time it was really hyped and it did not find um, as much as adoption as I think it wanted to have, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's it's like you want you want to abstract the complexities, but for example, to create a smart account, you need an ETH, right? So you want to yes. take that off, but then you actually need it. And... And most people are still using EOAs. There's still most dApps, you know, enable only EOAs to be used. So it's it's all these things that what was what we saw with account abstraction in, in its early days, and that did not find as much as adoption as it wanted to, to have, right? Um, but we actually were able to show that 
since ZK Sync implemented natively, now we're like we're processing around ten percent of all the the ZK Sync transactions. You, you can see that there is there's real adoption and and account abstraction. I believe will be big when there's the Petra upgrade coming in February next mm -hmm. year uh, because it will basically enable uh, EOAs to migrate into smart accounts in in one signature. So I believe that by you know the end of next year, maybe most of EOAs will actually just be uh, will, will be smart accounts and and that uh, account abstraction will be way more highly needed so mm -hmm. for now it's still a bit undercover but eventually it is the end game let's imagine uh, the future two years three years uh, ahead and uh, what can be possible with account obstruction what do you think yeah that's that's a good question um i think there, there's so much to be done because you know it's it's programmable wallets so you could create like uh ways to I don't know, generates APY with uh, with basically having assets in your wallets. You could program anything you want. So maybe you could you would see like protocols from from the wallet. I think there's like so much more that we have not seen yet. Um, mm -hmm. Especially that you know now that account account abstraction was like two different flows, right? On uh, on on most CVM chains where you know. Smart account is, is, is was still complex for people to adopt, uh, and that won't be the case. So now you're going to see way more demand, and 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 way more people wanting to 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 basically uh, use smart accounts and leverage account abstraction all and all. So there's and uh, what can you recommend to people who want to learn more about uh, account abstraction? Uh, what to read? What to watch? Uh, what to listen to? What can you recommend? There's a couple of of great actors that. That pull out a lot of contents like Biconomy, Pimlico, Zero Dev. We also have some some things around that. Alchemy is is also providing. Uh, they have a YouTube channel, by the way, Alchemy, which which provides a lot of content on account abstraction, uh, which is, which is really good. So yeah, it's it's all these actors that provide the contents and necessary information that you, that you can find. But yeah, thank you very much for your time, for your expertise, for sharing knowledge about account abstraction. Thanks for having me. It was, it was a real pleasure. Uh, don't hesitate to check out Zyfy, what we're doing. Uh, go go and try out all the all the dApps that has integrated uh, Zyfy, the different type of implementation. And if you're if you're building a, a dApp on ZK Sync or even a, ch a chain, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, if you want to make uh, transactions simple and, and guest us. We're, we're here to help. Yeah, thank you very much. So, guys, I leave all Gutierrez links under this video so you can follow him and uh, reach out to him if you want to build something with Sci-Fi. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like it, share it with your friends and see you next time.